Butterflies are the supermodels of the animal world. But they start life as caterpillars. They're eating machines with little promise of the beauty to come. As adults, they're like flowers with wings. Dressed to impress, their gaudy markings reveal their true nature. They're designed with sex in mind, and very little else. Grubs and butterflies. It's a tale of two lives, from caterpillar to catball. Delicate and beautiful as adults, voracious and ugly as grubs, butterflies' lives are like plays acted out in four parts. Egg, caterpillar, chrysalis and adult. Each character has an essential role to play in the butterfly theatre of life. And each part demands a change in costume. Scene one, and the lights go up on our stage to reveal an intricately patterned egg. Already the drama is high, the egg at risk of being eaten or poisoned by chemical attack. Scene two, and the caterpillars hatch. Insatiable eating machines, caterpillars can consume 86,000 times their own body weight in food, stripping even mighty oak trees bare. But caterpillars are constantly under attack, plagued by parasites, birds and bugs. Only a few will survive the first acts of our play. The action now moves off stage. Hidden within a chrysalis pupa, the caterpillar changes costume to don the wings of an adult. Many will not make it. Like all good plays, the butterfly's life is not without suspense and tragedy. At every turn they die from dehydration, disease or fall victim to enemies. So caterpillar, chrysalis and adult have evolved defences. They've become poisonous, camouflaged or taken on a disguise. As the curtain pulls back for the last scene, the butterfly takes centre stage. If the caterpillars of Act 1 are eating machines, this grand finale is the set piece for one of nature's most flamboyant gigolos. This is a romance story after all, and sex is the sole role for these supermodels of the animal world. They show off their looks with wings painted like bouquets of flowers, and smother their partners with sweet scent. For butterflies, the art of seduction involves good looks and perfume. And in the end, they'll mate. By separating one life into a creature that feeds and another that breeds, butterflies and caterpillars avoid competition and can concentrate on what they do best. From caterpillar to catwalk, life is no dress rehearsal. The butterfly's wardrobe is full of colour. After all, they're supermodels strutting nature's catwalk. Their compound eyes detect a wider range of the spectrum than our own limited perception. They can even see ultraviolet light, way beyond our visual range. It's no wonder that they display with such vivid markings. Their colours come from thousands of minute scales on their wings, overlaid like roofing tiles. Some scales are tinted with pigments. This is the butterfly's makeup. Others spit light into rainbow colours like oil on the surface of water. The butterfly's jewellery. As a result, the wings look different from different angles. This refraction of light is what makes eye spots flash their warnings or shine an intimidating, irregular glare. The size, shape and colour of a butterfly's wings indicate its sex, species and health or relay messages like, I'm poisonous and don't taste good. Birdwing butterflies of both sexes wear warning colours and their bitter taste soon teaches young birds to leave them alone. It's a case of once bitten, more than twice shy. Immunity from predators means species like the birdwings can be proud, grow large and fly high in safety. 
Markings can also be deceptive. When resting, butterflies fold their wings together to hide the bright top side from view. The underside is usually well camouflaged. From below, the Australian leaf wing butterfly is a perfect copy of a dead leaf. Many species flash bright eye spots to confuse even the sharp eyes of birds. And if all else fails, the attack can be misdirected. False antennae on the hind wings of the imperial blue deflect attackers from the head to the tail of the butterfly. It's a strategy taken to the extreme by the Australian plain butterfly. Its false antennae are backed up by a pair of false eyes. It's enough to baffle any predator searching for the typical butterfly shape. The common Jezebel butterfly is unique in having wings that are brighter underneath than on top. It's a warning for predators to steer clear. These butterflies are poisonous. Common Jezebels lay their eggs in mistletoe growing on eucalyptus trees. Because mistletoe is poisonous to most animals, the Jezebel's caterpillars avoid competition for food. And there's always plenty of mistletoe for them to feed on, thanks to the rather unimaginatively named mistletoe bird. Mistletoe birds feed on mistletoe berries. It's in their interest to ensure future supplies, so they've become farmers of a sort. Instead of defecating on the ground, the birds carefully place their waste onto eucalyptus branches. Mistletoe berries are easily digested by the birds, but the hard seeds in the centre are indigestible and pass through the gut unchanged. The seeds stick to the branch accompanied by a handy parcel of fertiliser. There they grow into new parasitic plants, sucking the sap of the eucalyptus. And the mistletoe feeds the caterpillars, which in turn become butterflies and pollinators of plants. It's a neat three-way relationship between bird, plant and butterfly. Butterflies have been called flying flowers, and it's an appropriate name. Both wings and petals are vital for reproduction. Flowers use coloured petals to attract pollinators. Nature's supermodels use coloured wings to attract a mate. And just like flowers use nectar to attract pollinators, male butterflies shower their partners with perfume. A rose by any other name would never smell so sweet. There's an aphrodisiac in the male's scent that induces the female to mate. scent be directed at the female. This male orchard butterfly is using backward strokes of his wings to fan his fragrance to his partner's antennae. The scents or pheromones are produced by special scales on the wings. You can clearly see the scales as a pair of light patches on each forewing of this crow butterfly. The male tiger butterfly's scent scales form a distinct pocket, this time on the hind wings. While bird wings bestow their bouquet with hair-like scales fringing the wing surface. This common crow disperses perfume from special hair pencil scales on his abdomen. The scales are recharged with pheromones secreted by glands on the insect's wings. 
It's an aromatic and eye-catching display. Many butterflies even shower their mates with golden scent-laden hairs. It's like roses showering a theatre stage. Butterflies go to extraordinary lengths to secure a partner, and competition can lead to some unique behaviour. The woods of England are the setting for a very unusual display. Courtship for the speckled wood butterfly involves males fighting not for a mate, but for land. The female of the species is a sun lover. She needs the sun to warm her body after the chill and shade of the woods. So males defend woodland clearings where the sun penetrates the canopy. This is where his stage is set for love. Since the strongest male holds the best territory, by sunning herself in the best clearings, the female can be sure of a good suitor. sense. Males that hold on to territories for the longest mate with the most females and pass on the most genes to the next generation. But sometimes sunny spots are just too large for one male to defend. This is no Romeo and Juliet. Mayhem breaks out as countless males turn the courtship dance into an aerial battle. It may look like an elegant display to human eyes, but in the world of butterflies, this is war. And who would have thought of butterflies being territorial fighters? For some species, looks are simply not enough. This male tiger butterfly is scratching a heliotrope plant. It contains chemicals he needs to attract a partner. He'll use the plant sap to produce sex pheromones. The tiger butterfly regurgitates saliva onto the leaf and sucks up the juice. It's not unusual for butterflies to collect chemicals. Florida queen butterflies are poisonous thanks to the milkweed they eat. In contrast, this viceroy isn't poisonous, but mimics the look of the Florida queen for its own protection. The question is, how can they tell each other apart when it comes to courtship and mating? This male Florida queen has the answer. The dark spots on his wings are packed with scent scales. They release an aphrodisiac derived from his food, which makes his partner sexually receptive. As viceroys eat different things, they smell different. So if the female Florida queen smells a viceroy, she doesn't become aroused or mate with the wrong species. These male imperial blue butterflies are waiting for females to emerge from their chrysalises. The ants swarming over the plant seem not to bother them, and we'll see why later. The butterflies pupated as a group, having fed together as caterpillars. But the males pupate faster than females and emerge first. Guided by scent, they gather around this female pupa. A potential mate is waiting in the wings. The males fight to mate with the female as soon as she appears.
only one male will be successful. So it's the early bird that gets the worm. The female doesn't even have time to expand her wings before she's set upon by her suitors. But as the strongest male will get to her first, she can rest assured that he's the fittest father for her grubs. Male butterflies are fanatical when it comes to courtship. Even when mating, a female birdwing doesn't lose her sex appeal. She's not fussy either. She'll mate several times, so it's worth other males being persistent. Competition ensures that only the fittest genes are passed from one generation to the next. Only the strongest can survive. Competition is the driving force of evolution, and it's resulted in the staggering diversity of butterflies we see today. For most species, it's the lady who chooses a partner. She'll only mate when she's satisfied by the male's courtship display. Being a success with the opposite sex is the key role for these supermodels of the animal world. They're gigolos, perfectly adapted to the task in hand. Courtship and mating over, butterflies have one more mission. They must find the right plant on which to lay their eggs. The survival of their caterpillars depends on it, so butterflies have evolved to be skilled botanists. They can't afford to make mistakes when telling one plant from another. Taste buds on her feet allow this imperial blue to check out an acacia tree. By rubbing the tip of her abdomen against the bark, further sensors give her clues to the age and health of the plant. Satisfied, she lays her eggs in a cluster at the base of a branch. Butterfly eggs come in many forms. Most are laid one to a leaf and spread over several plants. This tactic reduces competition for food amongst hatchling caterpillars. But some are laid in clusters. It's safety in numbers, but a strategy with drawbacks. When the greedy young caterpillars emerge, they eat the leaves around them, and some will still have unhatched eggs on them. It's a big problem. One that the cruiser butterfly overcomes by laying eggs on a part of the plant the caterpillars don't eat. In this case, a dead tendril. The eggs soon darken to match their surroundings. The rustic butterfly lays her eggs in the last place you would expect an insect to go, a spider web. The spider doesn't recognize them as prey and they'll be left alone by other insects who risk being eaten themselves. The monarch butterfly uses another trick. The female lays her eggs on milkweed plants, poisonous to most animals. By being adapted to eat the milkweed, the caterpillars and the adults they'll become will be toxic too.
caterpillars of the birdwing butterfly feed exclusively on the Aristolochia vine that hangs in the rainforest understory. But there's a problem. Aristolochia is so packed with deadly toxins that the eggs wouldn't hatch if they were laid directly onto the plant's surface. The eggs would fail to develop and could even be attacked by deadly fungus. In addition, leaves are so sparse on Aristolochia that older caterpillars could easily eat the eggs. The birdwing solves these problems by laying her eggs nearby but on a different species of plant. On hatching, and sustained only on a meal of eggshell, the solitary caterpillar must make its own way to the feast. Many won't survive the journey, but those that do will dedicate themselves to converting leaves into a plump caterpillar body. Caterpillars are leaf-eating machines. In their race to become butterflies, the odds are stacked against them, so they eat fast and grow fast. They're gluttons for nourishment. Caterpillars of the orange lacewing are protected from predators by safety in numbers. Most caterpillars hatch on their food plants and begin feasting immediately. Some caterpillars consume 86,000 times their own body weight in their lifetime. In human terms, that's the same as eating 700 burgers every single day. And in just a couple of weeks, a caterpillar will increase its weight by thousands of times. But skin can only stretch so far, so caterpillars must molt, replacing their skin as they grow. And it's not just the skin that's replaced. The lining of the throat, the hindgut, and the caterpillar's breathing tubes are also renewed. It makes sense. A larger caterpillar has a larger demand for air and food. The skin is discarded like a pile of old clothes. Beneath is a brand new one the next size up. Molting is usually a solitary activity, but the communal caterpillars of the orange lacewing molt together. Nothing goes to waste. The skins are eaten, recycling the proteins and minerals. And as soon as their new jaws have hardened, the caterpillars renew their attack on the plant. In the paperbark swamps of northern Australia, you can find the strangely shaped ant house plants. They're saprophytes. They grow on the branches of other trees. Their bulbous tuber or stem is riddled with tunnels and chambers. Within these chambers resides the caterpillar of the Apollo jewel butterfly. Feeding on the fleshy tuber, it literally eats itself out of house and home. There's rarely more than one caterpillar in residence at a time, but it does cohabit. Ant house plants get their name from colonies of small ants that live in the tubers alongside the caterpillars. And the plant actually grows its own roots into its tuber to feed on the caterpillar's waste. Many butterflies have evolved intimate relationships with ants. All belong to a family known as the blues. One such relationship exists between the oak blue butterfly 
and weave around. The caterpillars bribe the ants into acting as their bodyguards. The butterflies gain protection. But what's in it for the ants? They're paid for their protection racket with protection honey. Small droplets of sugars secreted by glands on the caterpillar's back. In addition, some caterpillars have further glands that produce proteins and amino acids deficient from the ant's diet. Without these essential supplements, the ants may become sick and could even starve. So the caterpillars gain protection and the ants essential nutrients. It's a partnership that works the world over. And every species of blue butterfly has adopted its own species of ant guardian. Some species of blue butterfly have taken the relationship with ants even further. The caterpillars of the Genevieve Azure Blue live within the nests of sugar ants. The ants build their nests at the base of trees laden with weeping mistletoe, the favourite food of the caterpillars. By day, ants and caterpillars rest in the nest, hidden from birds and other prying eyes. But as night falls, an incredible migration takes place. Each caterpillar leaves the nest and with a squadron of ants to guard it, climbs the tree for a midnight feast of mistletoe. The ants stand guard over it all night and then escort it back to the safety of their nest by dawn. There's one species of blue butterfly that's overturned their friendship with ants. Weaver ants build nests of leaves in the rainforests of northern Australia. They're aggressive predators, gripping with their mandibles and squirting formic acid at their victims. Anything that moves can fall prey, and caterpillars are perfect food to bring back for the ants' larvae. But never has a worm turned as effectively as this. This must be the world's most unusual caterpillar. Lyphera brussolis, the armor-plated caterpillar. The caterpillar of a blue butterfly, a group that usually lives in harmony with ants, Lyphera has turned deadly. It's a ruthless, flesh-eating predator a carnivorous caterpillar that eats ants and nothing else. And Lyphera actually lives within the ant's nest. So when the ants move house, the caterpillar goes too. The ants are defenseless. Their mandibles and acid spray guns useless against the leathery outer case of the caterpillar. It's perfectly safe, protected beneath its hard, tough shell. The only thing the ants can do is make threatening gestures. Lyphera first finds its way into the nest after hatching from an egg laid on a leaf. Once inside, it has an assured supply of food for life. But it's not the ants themselves that are eaten. The caterpillar feeds exclusively on the ant's larvae.
weaver ants group their larvae according to age. They're sticky, so the ants can easily move them about. But this also makes them vulnerable to the caterpillar. It grabs them tight and drags them under its carapace to be consumed en masse and at its leisure. For the ants, this is a massacre. Generations of larvae consumed at one sitting. Lyphera survives attack from the ants thanks to its hard hide. But at some time it must pupate and emerge as an adult butterfly. Surely now its frail body will be vulnerable to the ants. But Lyphera has an answer for everything. To stop the ants attacking while it pupates, it secures itself to the leaf with silk. Uniquely, it then begins to pupate within its armour. In time-lapse, you can see the chrysalis is quite safe. The emerging adult can also defend itself from the ants. Its body is covered in special elongated scales. These fall away when the ants attack, clogging their pincers and frustrating their assault. In difference to the ant's efforts, the butterfly sits on the edge of the nest and expands its wings in peace, before heading off in search of a mate and repeating the cycle of ant attack. Who would have thought it? A killer butterfly turning the tables on ants. And as weaver ants are common in tropical Queensland, and Lyphera is rare, it's a relationship likely to continue. Many caterpillars, like this of the monarch butterfly, feed on poisonous plants and become poisonous themselves in the process. This protects them at all stages of their life from the attentions of predators. But there's no point in being deadly poisonous without making predators aware of the fact. Many caterpillars advertise their toxic nature using brightly coloured warnings. Caterpillars that display together stay together. By feeding together all their lives, lacewing caterpillars increase the effect of their markings. Many caterpillars lack poisons. Instead, they rely on disguise. Often their markings blend in with the colour and texture of their environment. This one rests at the tip of the leaf it's been eating, where it's disguised to resemble the damaged midrib. It may seem uncomfortable, but a little rain is a small price to pay for survival. The caterpillars of the rustic butterfly, whose eggs were protected by being laid on the spider's web, protect themselves in between meals by dangling on their own silken thread. recognize prey as visual patterns, so any departure from the norm can tip the balance in favor of the caterpillar. The 
the orchard swallowtail protects itself by pretending to be a bird dropping. Should their disguise be broken, many caterpillars will feign aggression. Some shoot out a brightly coloured tongue, called an osmeterium. To any predator hunting by sight, it looks like an attack, or perhaps the forked tongue of a snake. It also gives off a pungent scent to make it seem inedible. caterpillar seems to be one long dinner party. But death stalks the alleyways of nature in many guises. The caterpillar's spines and poisons are no defence against the assassin bug. It injects a poison of its own, killing the caterpillar and liquefying its body before sucking it dry. Birds seek out the more palatable caterpillars, and at least death is quick. But there are other killers who take their time over the feast. Paper wasps have stung this caterpillar to death. It'll be cut into bite-sized chunks to be fed to the wasp's grubs. Bright colors, pungent scents, camouflage and mimicry are no defence against the smallest, deadliest and most insidious enemies of all. The insect parasites. Instead of killing like ordinary predators, parasitic wasps and flies inflict on their victims a lingering and horrific fate. To be eaten alive and from within. The eggs hatch and the larvae develop on the caterpillar, with lethal results. The caterpillar is turned into a nursery, and it's kept alive as fresh meat for the grubs. Even the chrysalis stage is vulnerable. The black marks show that parasites have taken over its body too. These adult wasps are predators by proxy. The prey is not for them, but for their offspring. A lucky few caterpillars will survive the predators and parasites of youth. The days as an eating machine are over. The jaws are cast off and the caterpillar pupates, transforming into an adult butterfly within a chrysalis case. At least that's the theory. But once found by the parasitic wasps, its fate is sealed. Many different wasps will lay their eggs within this one chrysalis. Each egg will divide to produce 2,000 genetically identical wasps. So thousands of wasps will emerge, mate on the carcass and then fly off in search of fresh prey. It's the stuff of nightmares, being eaten alive from within. These 
lacewing caterpillars have so far survived the predators and parasites. They finish feeding and are about to pupate. The old skin is discarded and the lacewing hangs beneath the branches of the plant it's just consumed. Fastened by a knob of silk and hooks at the tip of the tail. Just as feeding together protected the caterpillars, safety in numbers ensures that some of these chrysalises will survive. Birdwing caterpillars always leave their food plants before pupating to reduce the risk of being eaten by immature caterpillars. Its pupation is a little more complex than most. First, it fixes itself to a branch by its tail. Once secure, it sets about weaving a girdle of fine silk threads, using its legs as a loom. This fixes the pupa securely to the stem. The girdle fits snugly between two body segments to take its weight. For a well-fed, healthy caterpillar, pupation takes place smoothly. The skin slips off like a glove, leaving the girdle in place. But things can still go wrong. Chemical defences may have kept the caterpillar safe from predators, but they're useless against the drifting spores of a fungus. Other chrysalises die through disease, dehydration, or sheer exhaustion. Even if pupation is successful, the butterfly can still fail to emerge correctly. It's a critical stage. Any delay will cause the wings to dry out and harden before they've been expanded. Such a crippled butterfly would be unable to fly and would soon die. Inside a healthy chrysalis, major changes are taking place. The soup of chemicals that made up the caterpillar's body is being reordered into what we know as a butterfly. Every species has its own unique pupa. Some are wonderfully camouflaged. Others glitter like jewels. Inside, the caterpillar's tissues are breaking apart into millions of living cells that can be reassembled into the new tissues of the adult. It's a miraculous transformation, and one we still barely understand. Exactly how the process of metamorphosis is controlled is a mystery that may never be resolved. But every season has its survivors, individuals that manage to cross the bridge between two different lives. Starting out as greedy caterpillars, some emerge as adults of rare beauty, the supermodel stars of nature's catwalk. Butterflies are creatures of freedom and beauty. Their lives an endless symphony of colour and movement. They're engaged in a constant struggle to survive and breed, a battle whose outcome is always in doubt. From start to finish, butterflies' wings are in constant use. but they're much more than just a means of getting around. Their shape and colour indicate sex and species, 
or warn a predator that the owner is poisonous or distasteful. Such active creatures are perpetually in need of refueling, and wings are used in a continual search for nectar-bearing flowers. Their coiled tongue is a hollow tube, a drinking straw to delve deep into flowers for nectar. Flowers provide this pit stop service in payment for having their pollen grains carried to the next flower. But pollen isn't the only burden butterflies must bear. These mites aren't parasites, they're harmless passengers. Hitchhikers in search of a ride. Many different species of mites travel in this way, using a variety of animals for transport. Lacking wings, the mites must board the butterfly. The tongue's the gangway, and this flight's about to depart. In large numbers, mites cause some irritation, but there's nothing the butterfly can do. Far from being simple, beautiful and fragile creatures, butterflies are an essential element in the fragile network of the natural world. Delicate and delightful, butterflies adopt many disguises, changing their costumes to suit different scenes. This is the cast of characters in the butterfly play. Egg, caterpillar, chrysalis and adult. Each role acted to perfection, each character specialising in breeding or feeding, and each one prone to attack. Eggs rot. Caterpillars are plagued and adults attacked. So each stage of the butterfly's life has evolved its own defences, poisons, disguises, camouflage and warnings. Survival can be tricky, so some butterflies have even enlisted the help of others. It's a protection racket funded by food. But some have turned to the dark side. Who could suspect a butterfly would start its life as a killer? The chrysalis carries caterpillars to a new world, to be born again with brilliantly coloured wings. Adult butterflies are built for sex. They're flamboyant gigolos passing genes to the next generation. Their wings, adverts for mates. Their perfumes, pungent aphrodisiacs. It's sex and death that has resulted in the diversity and beauty of butterflies. They're incredible survivors. Their lives split into two parts, lived almost as different species. A caterpillar that feeds, and an adult that breeds. And by concentrating on what they do best, each has become a master of its role, and more efficient as a whole. Butterflies and caterpillars manage to bridge the gap between two very different worlds. They're the supermodels of the animal kingdom, strutting their stuff from caterpillar to catwalk.